So during my clean earlier, I started rearranging some of the kitchen. The more I drank, the less I enjoyed this. I'm a, I'm a big fan. We all know I'm a big fan. I now have like 200 pages left in every book that I'm reading. <laughs> Am I laughing or am I crying? Like, I don't even know at this point. I had my headphones on in the shower to finish this in time. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my final vlog of 2023. Can you believe that we're at this point already? I am settling down to a day or a few days, I guess, of editing because I'm currently trying to get all of my videos for this week and next week edited and scheduled in advance. And I'm hoping to have that done by about Wednesday. So then I will be away from work until I think I need to film and edit my January TBR on New Year's Eve, but that shouldn't be a particularly long video. It should only take me a couple of hours. So my only real goal, <laughs> reading wise, for this vlog is the end of the year. So I have goals, but they're pretty low key. They're pretty simple. I just want to clear my TBR. And I'm telling you that's simple, but is it a significant amount of books? Potentially, I have only read three things so far this year, but I am a couple of hundred pages into my current read. And I have to say I'm really enjoying it, which is surprising because the thought of a Christmas romance is not appealing to me. I've never really wanted to read a Christmas romance before, but I do have a couple that I've acquired from subscription boxes over the last couple of years. And I want to make sure that I am at least reading one this season. I wanted to get through all three that I have, but that's just not going to happen. So I picked up The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox, which is the one that I've had the longest. This was a book of the month book from December 2021. And I actually have heard pretty meh things about this, but I'm enjoying it so far. So this one is following twin sisters who are both bakers. One of them works on like an LA equivalent of the Great British Bake Off, and they're doing like a 12 Days to Christmas special. And then the other one is running the family bakery in the small town that the twins are from. So the one that works in LA, which I think is Charlie, has an accident where a like whole rack of pans falls on her head and she ends up with a concussion and losing her sense of taste and smell. Now this is obviously crucial to her job because she needs to judge the contestants food in the filming of this TV show. So she calls up Cass who has recently broken up with her long term, like her high school boyfriend and asks if they want to swap places so that Cass can take Charlie's place on set and do the judging and Charlie can go home and run the bakery in the meantime. Now obviously this is a romance so they both end up connecting with people that are part of their sister's lives without telling those people that they're not the twin that they think that they are. One of my favourite things about this book is that the town that the twins are from is called Starlight Peak. It's one of those like super quaint like Christmas movie kind of towns and I also really love that so much of this book centers around food and bacon. I really like books about food, okay? I really like food. So books about food actually are a big hit with me, especially when it's something about baking because you guys know like I do like to cook and to bake quite a bit. So yeah, it's like nothing groundbreaking, but I'm feeling very festive this year and it's definitely very, very vibey. And I'm reading it pretty quickly. I only started it on Saturday afternoon and I'm 166 pages in and I plan on getting at least another 100 pages or so I would say read today. So that was kind of the wild card that I threw onto my TBR because obviously there's only one month of the year that I can read Christmas romances. But I do also have the rest of my TBR to get through in this vlog, which I mean, it's not small for two weeks. I'm not going to be working after hopefully Wednesday. I feel like I'm going to run into Thursday a little bit, which I'm hoping not actually because I want to do my food shop on Thursday morning. So while I will be doing other things while I'm not working, I don't have any social obligations over Christmas. So that's that's like a week and a half where I feel like I could get through at least most of these. I do have another book on my TBR as well, which is my December Patreon pick. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I'm sure it's by Leslie Vedder. So that's five and a half books to get through in two weeks. Can we do it? I don't know, because 
it's a lot of books. It's more books than I've read so far this month, but one of the books that I read so far this month is Lord of Chaos by Robert Jordan, which is a thousand pages. So that is the equivalent of like <laughs> three of these books. So it's definitely, I would say it's definitely possible. So today I'm editing. I'm hoping to finish editing last week's vlog, schedule my entire own TBR, and at least make a start on editing my anticipated releases video. Or actually, I think it should be my book haul that I edit next. I do have a nail appointment in an hour at 10.30, and that is me done for the day. So I'll let you know how everything goes. I'll let you know if I make any more progress in the holiday swap, and let's just see how much of this TBR we can get through before the end of the year. During my clean earlier, I started rearranging some of the kitchen and I wanted to show you guys. So ignore the Christmas like gift bags that are hanging around. Emma and Ryan left about an hour ago and I'm just about to like tidy the surfaces before I make dinner. But I have an island. Like I'm always complaining about counter space in my kitchen. I actually have an island that I never use because I make candles on it. It's pushed to the side of the room. So while all of my candle stuff is away, because I'm not gonna be making any candles until probably at least March now, because in January I need to pre-film, like make content for January and also pre-film February's content as well. So for the time being, I've put the island in the middle of the kitchen as a trial to see how we like it. And I already love it. So, here it is, because I've been working on this. Like, look at the look at the chopping board. This is Bree's dinner. She's on a diarrhea diet at the minute. But I've been working here. This is where I cook food. And then there's just no space for anything around. The only space is here. But we have like a bread bin and some like other bits here. So I need this surface space. And I've been thinking this kitchen is horribly designed, forgetting that this is actually an island and it should be in the middle of the floor. And We've also gained three new cupboards because these were pressed against the wall. Oh, I'm sorry, Bubba. Everybody's waiting for dinner. Oh, I also, when I was tidying my candle stuff away, I spilled a packet of mica powder um, and it hit the floor, but also my slipper. So this needs to go in the wash. I'm a little concerned maybe about the table because to fit it in the gap that the island was in, we have had to like fold it down to its smallest state. And as you can see, like we can only use this chair um, and this one, this doesn't fit. And I use this for jigsaws. We also use it for games, Lego, all of that kind of stuff. So we'll see how this fares kind of in the long run. But for now, this is like the situation we're trialing. And I already feel like, I don't know what I'm gonna do when I wanna make candles again. But in terms of the kitchen, I feel like this is, this is like so much better. <laughs> Today I made another Instagram recipe. This one is by the same creator as the last um, gnocchi bake that I did. That one was leek and sausage. This one is chorizo chicken and broccoli. The last one had a lot of leek in just because the leeks that we used were really, really big. So I'm thinking that this one, this one actually looks a little bit thicker. So we'll see how this one compares. Three, two, one. Once again, please ignore the rattling of the radiator. I don't know if I've given you an update on that, but we can't get a plumber out until after Christmas. And by after Christmas, like they pretty much mean after New Year, right? Because a bunch of people don't really go back to work until January. And it is just so, so loud. Like if you're playing something on TV, like I was working out on the floor. So literally right there and I couldn't hear it. 
here but it's so loud when you're sat next to it and it just happens to be the one that's behind the couch of all of the radiators. I'm also really sad about it because we thought that we'd fixed it earlier because we found a lot of air in one of the radiators and it went quiet so we thought we'd fix the problem but actually what we'd done is took so much pressure out of the boiler that the heating wasn't on. So we're still living with the rattle but today I finished editing and scheduling all of my videos which means that I'm kind of done now for Christmas. I don't feel like I'm done because I have to do the Christmas shop and finish the Christmas clean tomorrow and I also have a live show for my patrons tomorrow night which is just like my cadre and inner circle monthly check-in and then I'm also going to do some like a few hours of sprints when I think Friday daytime so the bulk of my work is done I still have a couple of things that I need to do and then obviously like just general Christmas and life prep and to be honest right now I should be prepping my shopping list for tomorrow morning because we're gonna go pretty early to hopefully miss like the majority of people but instead of prepping my Christmas list I have poured myself a cheap Kiki Bailey's which I've somehow convinced myself that I don't deserve because I do still have a couple of Patreon things to do before I'm like off for Christmas. I, I don't care though I'm still gonna drink it and I don't have very long left of the holiday swap. I'm on chapter 22 which is page 278 so I only have around 50 pages left so I'm planning to finish this while I drink my Bailey's. The problem is though is that I do this occasionally because I don't I don't drink that much but I'll, I'll have a cheeky Baileys while I'm reading and think I'll be like really relaxed and have a nice time. And then I'll end up getting so tipsy that I can't really concentrate on my books. I don't drink very much at all. So this will make me tipsy. I'll get halfway through and I'll realize what a horrible mistake it is. But I'll continue to finish my drink and then I won't be able to read and I'll have to go to bed. But by the time I get to bed, I'll be sober. And it happens every time, but I cannot, I can't resist a cheeky Bailey, especially at this time of year. I'm about to be a big, brave, strong girl and go brave my Christmas food shop. And speaking of food, actually, I keep telling you I'll update you on recipes and then not doing. So the chorizo chicken and broccoli gnocchi bake that I made the other day, I personally enjoyed more than the sausage and leek one. And I did also, like I said last week, I thought it would be better if you added a stock pot. So I did add a stock pot to this one and it was really, really good. And I feel like I baked it just a little bit longer as well, which made the sauce thicker. So definitely would recommend that one. And I will link the recipe down in my description box and you can check out like all of the similar recipes by the same creator as well if you would like to but i'm checking in with you guys before i head out one because i really don't want to go my plan is to finish the christmas cleaning when i get back as well which i also don't really want to do but at least then everything pretty much will be done but last night i did finish the holiday swap by maggie knox and i when i was well, i said to you guys last night like what always happens with me when i drink baileys is i then get too tipsy to read and i did get a bit tipsy last night while i was reading my book and interestingly the more i drank the less i enjoyed this well you'd think it would be the other way around so i did like it for the most part i liked the bulk of this book the first like 250 pages i was really getting into like the hallmark movie like like quaint little Christmas town vibe. I really, really love the theme of baking because as you know, I've been on a, a baking and cooking kick. I mean, I always am. I love baking and cooking, but I do feel like I've ramped it up a little bit and I do really like books that are about food, especially baking. So I really enjoyed that element of it and like the great British Bake Off like cooking competition thing we had going on as well as the small town vibes with like one of the twins running a bakery. But I do think that in the last like... 80 pages were the kind of like resolution of the book like the book was coming together it was a bit too twee for me which is why I typically don't love Christmas romances because I can deal with that kind of vibe in a Hallmark movie but if I'm reading a book like it takes too long to read a book like I'm in that vibe for too long and it definitely went that like sickly sweet bad Hallmark movie route to like towards the end so I gave it a low three stars it was good for the season but it's nothing 
like stand out. Like I definitely will not remember this book, but I enjoyed the Christmassy atmosphere of it for, like for the most part. I'm doing okay for my TBR, okay? So I've only read four books so far this month, but I do only have four left. Five if you include House of Earth and Blood, but if I listen to one hour of that a day, I'm gonna have it done by the end of the year. So I'm considering that one to be manageable. And I have four other books left and I'm feeling optimistic because I've only read four books so far this month, but one of them was a thousand pages you know so the next one i know which one i want to be reading at christmas that has like i guess the best vibes for christmas so i picked up my patreon book club book to try and have it finished before christmas which i think is doable because this is like a pretty quick read but that one is deadlands by stacy murray brown so this one is book three in a like post-apocalyptic kind of fantasy romance series where we're following a girl called brexley who is the ward of the king and from her position of privilege in this like human side of the city she steals drugs and other items from trains that transport them from the human to the face sides of the city and one day when she's doing that she's caught and she's thrown into a maximum security prison. The background of this world is that the veil between the fae and the human worlds fell, which resulted in a war that concluded, I think just under 20 years before the start of this. And the result was that the fae and the human sides of the world are kind of like split up. This book or this series is set in Budapest. Although going into book three, we have a little bit of Prague in here as well. And I do think that this particular setup is specific to this part of the world. There are other parts of the world where the fae and the humans live in harmony or where like they have like different situations going on. But in Budapest, there is a divide between the human and the fae and Brexley finds herself like an integral part of this conflict siding with different political parties and there's also like rebel groups and stuff in here as well. When we started this for the Alpha Hole book club I had already read book one and two so I reread them. This is the first one that I'm reading for the first time and it's already just like a different vibe because I keep saying like these books are not the best written books that I've ever read but they are like super addictive and I find that that kind of book isn't as good on reread as it is reading it for the first time because I'm not as like swept along with the drama when I'm reading it again but I already like from the first chapter of this like I am ready for this like it's super repetitive the same kind of things getting them out of the same kind of situations over and over again but I'm here for it and sometimes a series like this that I'm just really not here for but this is one of the ones where I can get behind it even knowing that it's not the best thing ever so I'm not sure how much reading I'm gonna get done today because after I've done the cleaning I'll probably listen to my audio while I'm cleaning so I'll still get some reading done but I do have a live show tonight as well as well as my workout so quite a few things on but I'm very much looking forward to tomorrow because if I get all of this done today I'll just be doing sprints tomorrow which obviously is super chill and only for a few hours and I'm ready to pate it's burrito mode from here onwards. <laughs> so I got a couple of bits that I wanna haul for you guys. It's not book stuff, none of it is book stuff and none of it is stuff that I picked up today, which I still was so busy for a Thursday morning. Like I know it's coming up to Christmas, but I'm really glad that we didn't go tomorrow because if that was what Thursday morning looks like, tomorrow would have been horrible. But finally, finally, some of my Taylor Swift merch was delivered. And it's not the thing that I was the most excited about, but I ordered this stuff in July and they kept telling me it was being delayed up until the end of October where they just simply ceased to stop updating me. But when I went to the Euros tour in Colorado, I didn't pick up any much. This is actually gonna be such a Taylor Swift thing because I'm wearing like a Taylor Swift Christmas jumper right now. But I went to Colorado and I saw the Euros tour and instead of buying merch there to bring home with me, I decided to order it online because all of the online stuff has all the dates on anyway. And the stuff on the UK store has the UK dates as well as just like the US ones, which the tour merch bought in the US at the tour only had US dates on. So I picked up the hoodie, which is the thing that I'm most excited about that still hasn't dispatched. But the t-shirt that I ordered finally arrived, which I picked up the red one. I was torn between red and I think it was Midnight's. And this one has a very like Daisy Jones and the six kind of feel to it. I'm a sucker for like tour merch and I really do need to stop because I have so many band t-shirts and I don't even really wear t-shirts that often anymore if I'm being honest. Speaking of Taylor Swift, the reason why this is an extra 
Taylor Swift haul is, as you all know, my besties came around to exchange Christmas presents on Tuesday. And I wanted to show you guys some of the things that they got me. One of them was this Taylor Swift tote bag that I did take out with me today, which is the colors of Taylor Swift. I'm not sure where they got it from, but I'll see if I can link it for you guys in the description box. I like that it's a really like square tote. It has like a a thick base on it so it's nice and roomy and it has like good like thick straps and then they essentially got me a lot of candles and body stuff which i gotta say even the stuff that curtis has got me this year i'm having such a girly christmas like normally i get things like games and things to do and like board games and video games and this year i feel like i've pretty much just got like clothes and body products and i'm really not mad about it so Emma got me this candle set from TK Maxx, it's a DW home one and it's a coffee shop with four like mini coffee candles in. You all know I make candles so I really should not be as excited about candles as I am most of the time but for some reason I never like to burn my candles. I like to buy them instead. I think that keeps it special because in the past when I've discovered that I can make something myself I get like the excitement taken from it so i'm glad that i still have excitement for scented candles but ryan also got me two christmas dw home candles the first one is franz merce this is like a mini one and then the bigger one has a really cool glass jar and this one is Christmas stories. Is that, yeah, that's pretty much like all of the super excited stuff, like the rest of the things I'm really excited about, but they're not like super exciting to show you guys. They got me a Lush box the night before Christmas one, which I've run out of bath bombs, so that's really great. And also a bag of Bath and Body Works things. So it's like shower gel, body scrub, and moisturizer in all of the Christmas scents. I will mention though, actually, that Winter Candy Apple, is my favorite fragrance ever. I had a candle for the first ever Believeathon that was a dupe of this and they stopped making the fragrance oil so I could never recreate it. And I knew that it was a dupe of Winter Candy Apple, but Bath and Body Works has only come to the UK in like the last year or so. And I think the first Christmas they were here was last year and they didn't stock Winter Candy Apple. So I actually know that Curtis has got me a gift set <laughs> this fragrance for Christmas because I am obsessed with it. It's my favorite scent ever. But yeah, that was just a few things I've received that I wanted to show you guys. It was mainly the Taylor Swift stuff, but while I was there, like I know you all love candles and body products, like who doesn't? So we've done the Christmas food shop. I have finished deep cleaning the kitchen and tomorrow I'm going to do my office while I do my final sprints before Christmas as well. So I've been listening to Crescent City. I don't know what page I'm on, but I think I'm on chapter 16 or 17. So progress is still really, really good with that. And I am hoping after sprints tomorrow, because I don't want to move my chair before I do sprints, I'm hoping to start a jigsaw and carry on listening to that as well and hopefully make some progress in Deadlands as well. Lots of reading time is ahead once I've finished cleaning my house. I just finished up a few hours of sprints with my patrons and I also finished up the Christmas cleaning this morning by doing the front room which is my office and so I am finally about to start a new puzzle the one that I'm going for this time is a 636 piece one which is a little bit bizarre but it is Bark Lane which is one of the Linda Jane Smith ones as y'all have probably noticed by this point I collect two types of puzzles I collect Linda Jane Smith puzzles she has the crazy cats ones and the dog ones as well and I also also collect 1000 piece Disney puzzles or 500 piece ones as well but mainly 1000 piece Disney puzzles and I've currently just been alternating between the two types but this is one of the ones that I picked up from the same place that I got the arc of the name of the wind when I was away like right at the beginning of the month and I got two both of them are Linda Jane Smith dog ones 636 pieces what do you want to go out right now I'm in the middle of something though I'll be, I'll be. So while I'm working on my jigsaw, I will also be listening to my audio book, which I could swear that I had told you guys that I had picked up an audio. Like I distinctly remember talking about it, but I've just edited this vlog today and I can confirm that I have not. But I have decided to start House of Earth and Blood 
via audio. Now I have, this is the third time that I'm gonna be reading this, which is the reason why I've chosen to go the audiobook route. The last two times I've read it, I've read it with my eyes, but I need to reread House of Sky and Breath as well next month. So if I don't get to this this month, then it's gonna like set me behind for rereading House of Sky and Breath. So I thought I would go the audio route with this one because it is a reread, like I don't have to pay attention a lot. I'm just setting myself up for book three, whereas for book two, I am gonna have to pay attention a lot more. And I was very dubious about going into the audio of this because I tried to listen to one of the Throne of Glass audios like probably about four years ago now. And the pronunciation was different to the pronunciation that I've been using like the entire time that I was reading that series. And at that point I was rereading as well. So I listened to like 20 minutes of it and I just could not listen any longer. So I was kind of nervous because all of Sarah J Mass's audios are narrated by the same narrator, Elizabeth Evans. But this is actually a really, really good audio. I'm having a really good time with it. Elizabeth Evans is a really great narrator. And so far I haven't found any of the pronunciation so offensive that I feel like I need to stop. I listened to quite a lot of this and if I'm being honest I should probably turn my attention to reading physically today because I've already listened to 100 pages of this today. I'm on page 282 but I just want to do my jigsaw and like I said the audio for that is good. I'm probably not going to talk about this too much because it is my third read through. This is my favourite book of all time which is like the main thing you need to know about it. I should give you a synopsis though right? So like House of Earth and Blood is the first book in the Crescent City series and it's following a half fey woman called Bryce Quinlan who is tasked with investigating a string of murders by the Archangel of Crescent City, Micah, because she has a personal tie to these murders. They actually thought that they'd caught the murderer like a couple of years before the bulk of this story. But when some new people start to turn up dead in a similar fashion, Bryce is asked to look into it. And then because it is so dangerous, she is assigned the help of the fallen angel, Bunt Athalar, to serve as her personal bodyguard. So this is about like trauma, healing, trust, guilt, friendship, all that good stuff. And it is like my favorite book ever. I was worried when I reread it for the first time that I wouldn't love it as much as I did the first time around, but I actually loved it even more, which was great. And it is a little bit disappointing because I don't love book two quite the same. And I don't feel like the reread is gonna change that much for me, but I am really enjoying rereading this and then going the audio route as well is really nice because it's obviously a story that's familiar to me, but I also have the joy of listening along like in a and ingesting it in kind of like a new way so i'm gonna crack on with my jigsaw and listen to some of that i have like an hour and a half an hour and 15 until i'm gonna start making dinner and then tonight i've actually asked curtis if we can watch an arnold schwarzenegger film the only one that he's ever seen is jingle all the way and i like that was my childhood like arnold schwarzenegger movies were my childhood so the ones that i haven't seen in years that i really really want to watch are twins junior and kindergarten cop so i think we're gonna pick one of those tonight which i'm really excited about i'm also really excited because like the christmas festivities truly begin now because i have no youtube or work stuff to do at all like i cleared through a bunch of admin during sprints so i'm free and i'm feeling real good about it it's the end of the year everywhere on tv and Christmas trees keep wrapping in cheese. Just the worst thing to be with someone special. Yeah, I 
Good morning my guys, I am looking very unfestive at the minute but Merry Christmas Eve. I am on my way to my dad's with some very precious cargo because I have the turkey with me for tomorrow's Christmas dinner and I'm also going to be dropping him off half of the bacon that I did yesterday because we have a 14 piece cheesecake for Christmas which I'll be bringing half of that home with me as well tomorrow so I don't also need the cinnamon bun snowflake and the biscoff trees i will put the recipe for both of those down in the description box though because they were once again instagram recipes i still haven't tried the cinnamon so i can't give you a verdict on that but the biscoff trees were better than i expected they were real real good i do have some reading updates to give you guys because i am like 200 pages into is it deadlands i'm reading right now i know they're all lands but i don't remember which one's which i want to be more confident with vlogging but i live in such a small town that like I hate people perceiving me but um yeah I'll give you a reading update when I get home but right now I'm gonna text my dad and tell him that I'm on my way and hopefully I'll be home and getting ready I, I actually think when I get home I'm gonna have a bath wash my hair put my pajamas on and do cozy things all evening which is why I'm going to my dad's now and kind of like getting it out of the way but at some point this evening I'll let you know how my progress with whatever lands book it is I'm reading is going. So I made it back. It's a lot later than I anticipated making it back because it is 11.35 and I'm about to go to bed. But I'm currently, I think I've just hit the halfway point in House of Earth and Blood. I'm on page 390 and I didn't think that this was going to hit the same in audio as it does reading it physically. But damn, the sexual tension in this is so good and it's kind of sad rereading this and still being obsessed with it knowing that I don't love House of Sky and Breath as much. But I'm having like every single time I read this, I have a great time. It's still my favorite book ever. And Bryce Quinlan and from Athel are like, I'm a, I'm a big fan. We all know I'm a big fan. But that is going. I'm still listening to at least an hour a day. I'll probably fall behind tomorrow, but I'll make it up again like later in the week. Deadlands, I'm not reading so much of. I'm not really reading a lot physically right now. I'm 250 pages into it. And I did read the first like 125 pages quite quickly. And then I've slowed down a little bit since then. I am not loving the romantic elements. Like there's some bits of this that I really, really like. And there's some bits of it that just give me the ick a little bit. And I... I've had my issues with romance over the last six months to a year. Like I haven't been feeling romance and smut as much. Like I haven't been enjoying it as much as I have in the past. And I feel like the sexual tension in here between the main characters is really good. Like I do like that. But then the sex scenes in here kind of feel like bad porn. Like you know how everything in porn is exaggerated and unrealistic. That's how it feels in this. And... <laughs> <laughs> not having a good time with that. I do feel like some of the key plot points in this series are drawn out quite a bit for like the sake of like cliffhangers, like suspending the satisfaction that you get from finding things out. And I feel like in, in some of those instances, like it feels like suspension for the sake of suspension where we really do need to be getting some answers at this point. I do still really find these books quite addictive, but I do find that there is a lull in every single book. And I feel like the middle part of this one, normally it's at the beginning, but I got through the beginning of this one quite quickly and I was really invested. And I feel like my pace has slowed throughout the middle. It has had some conveniences, some of the repetitive instances that we've had in previous books, but I'm having an all right time with it so far. If it had have carried on 
the way it was at the beginning, I'd say it was like a four at this point. But right now I'm feeling more like a three, which is along the same lines as I gave as I rated like books one and two. I actually don't know whether I'm gonna be continuing with this book over the next couple of days because there is a book on my TBR that I feel like has very like cozy Christmas vibes or it's of all of the books on my TBR, it's the book that I would most like to read at Christmas time based on the atmosphere I'm assuming it has. So I might pick that one up tomorrow, but I think, cause I'm gonna go to bed, but I'm not gonna sleep for a little while cause Curtis has to shower and stuff. And if I go to sleep before him, like if I go to sleep before Curtis is in bed, when he gets in bed, he wakes me up. And like, if I'm startled awake or if I'm unnaturally awoken, I wake up immediately anxious. So I just don't sleep until he gets in bed. It's normally not that much of an issue cause we either go to bed at around the same time or I'm actually the one that stays up a little bit later or I get in bed and read like while he's getting ready for bed. But yeah, I definitely go out of my way to make sure as much as possible that that just doesn't happen because it's not worth the anxiety. But I think I'm gonna read a little bit more of this and then if I do end up reading much tomorrow, which I mean, who knows? I will be drinking a little bit tomorrow, but I don't really drink, so I can't see me being drunk. But you never know when you're around other people. Yeah, potentially if I'm feeling it, I'm gonna put this down for a couple of days while I focus on something else from my TBR, but I will still be carrying on with House of Earth and Blood and I'm actually really enjoying the comfort of like rereading my favorite book at this time of year. It's bringing me a lot of joy. What isn't bringing me a lot of joy though actually while I'm sat here is this puzzle. The quality of this is horrific. Like Gibson's is the company that makes this one. I think the majority of the ones I have by this artist are Gibson's puzzles and they're normally really good quality. The thick pieces, the locking's good, no issues. This is horrible. Like the pieces are really thin. I have issues with the locking on them. Like a lot of them fit with a variety. Like there's loads of the same color that all fit together, even though they shouldn't necessarily. The entire thing, like all of the edges have this thick pig border around them which makes them harder to put together because you can't tell like as much of the detail of the actual puzzle because it's all this pink border. And when you figure out that they're not in the right place and you try to separate them, they split into layers and the entire like top of the puzzle lifts off. So it's probably like the worst quality puzzle I've ever done. And that's wild considering it's a Gibson's one. But the puzzle, like the picture, I'm enjoying because it's a Linda Jane Smith one, but it has like the side pieces took me a long time to get together because they were all just like, a lot of them look the same and they were all fitting together in pretty much any formation. And it's only when I've put some of the central pieces in that I've realized that they're just not supposed to, to go like that. So it's causing me a bit of stress, but I did have a good like hour long session earlier while I was listening to my audio book. So I'm gonna go. I'll probably check in with you guys at some point tomorrow, but Merry Christmas. It's way past Christmas when you're seeing this, but Merry Christmas regardless. So I just wanted to let you guys know that I have actually changed my mind and I'm gonna be starting my cozy Christmas read now, which is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Clune. I figure Christmas Eve is like peak Christmas vibe, so I might as well just go ahead and crack this one open. TJ Clune writes like emotional, cozy fantasy, which I feel like is just perfect for Christmas. So I'll give you guys a little bit of a synopsis later on, but I'm just gonna go get stuck into this now. <laughs> and to be honest I know I complained a lot about it but the middle of it like quality wise was fine I still stand by these edges being awful though the last piece of the puzzle that I actually put in was some of these side pieces down here 
because they were just all in the wrong place and I could only tell where they went when I had the centerpieces to like kind of line them up with. But for a 636 piece puzzle, I do feel like this took me a long time. As usual though, I did really love the art. I am gonna be starting another puzzle. I still have a fair bit of House of Earth and Blood left. I'm like 450 pages in now. 488 so I still have like 300 pages to go and I'm actually really excited because I want to start the puzzle that I got for Christmas which let's go have a look. So this one is the one that Curtis got me for Christmas. This one is one of the Disney Park signature puzzles and it's tangled. I'm a little bit worried about it in terms of the I want to say like the darkness of it like I don't feel like it's going to be the easiest puzzle but they do like a whole collection of these which are really nice for like all different movies so if I enjoy this one they could end up being like a bit of a collector's item for me and <laughs> hey hammy the boxes are pretty small which is cool for storage because obviously I have quite a few jigsaws now and can you get off they take up a lot of space pretty quickly hello I have just filmed my TBR to go up on Sunday, which is the one video that I couldn't pre-film because obviously like I didn't know how much I was going to read at the end of December. And then I also filmed my unboxing because if I haul these books in December, then they don't contribute to the books that I've hauled in 2024, which means I won't start the year at an immediate disadvantage when one of my main goals is to read more books than I've hauled. Do you like the way I think? Because I do. But now I have a lot of tidying up to do and I'm actually going to the cinema in an hour and I want to get some lunch before I go as well. We're going to see Wonka, which I'm really excited about. I've always been a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory fan. My favourite one is the Johnny Depp Tim Burton one, of course. I'm also like a massive Tim Burton fangirl and I'm very, very excited to see this new oh it's not even like a reimagining is it it's a prequel which is even more exciting i think if it was just another version of charlie and the chocolate factory i wouldn't necessarily be as hyped for it as i am and timothy chalamet looks real good as willy wonka i like like i'm i'm about it so i did want to bring you guys a little bit of a reading update before i shoot off and while i look like a human for the only time this week. What day is it week is my favourite week of the year and I really lean into those vibes. I am getting back on my workouts today though but um yeah I've been I haven't been around for the last couple of days. Boxing day is my favourite day of the year and it's very much like a uh, pyjamas or comfy clothes all day relaxing and I pretty much alternated between reading under the whispering door, watching YouTube, doing my jigsaw and listening to House of Earth and Blood, watching YouTube and then repeat for the entire day. And I was thriving, it was amazing, but I am a considerable amount of the way into Under the Whispering Door now. So I can give you guys a little bit more of a synopsis and also let you know my thoughts so far. I'm 174 pages into it. I do need to get my shit together though because I now have like 200 pages left in every book that I'm reading and I need to actually finish something. That would be great. But this one is a very wholesome, like cozy vibes fantasy story about a guy who is a lawyer and he is not a people person. He's not very nice, he's not empathetic. He is a very successful lawyer though, and he's very, very rich, but that's literally all he has in his life. So he actually dies of a heart attack, and the only people that attend his funeral are his ex-wife that hates him, and the three partners of his law firm. So he is like furious that he's dead. He doesn't want to accept it. He doesn't understand why nobody came to his funeral. And he's picked up by a reaper and a reaper's job is to escort a person to the ferryman who will like help them to pass on. So the ferryman in question is Hugo who owns a tea shop. It's like a, a regular tea shop that caters to regular human customers. Wallace is lingering around there as a ghost as he comes to terms with his own death. Now there are more ghosts in here as well there is a ghost dog called Apollo and also Hugo's grandfather is hanging around and as he's kind of coming to terms with his death reflecting on his life he's obviously also learning to be a better person. Now this is like a very recurring theme in the two TJ Klune books that I've read where you have somebody who is very like conventionally successful or gives themselves entirely to their work but has very little outside of that like learning empathy and also like becoming a better person in the like 
the long run. We also have a queer romance in both of the T.J. Klune books that I've read that is definitely like a recurring theme through T.J. Klune's books and I'm having a really good time with this. I'm not liking it quite as much as The House in the Cerulean Sea and I think that that's because that one has a little bit more of a plot whereas this one is while there's things going on at the tier room there's like mysterious characters that maybe also need help with different areas of their life that Hugo and potentially Wallace can provide. There's also the mystery of like why some of the ghosts in this tea room like haven't moved on. There's Hugo himself, there's the romance, there is the Reaper May as well who is a central character in here. So there's all like little bits going on but I would compare the plot in this to like the plot of Becky Chambers Wayfarer series where it is all very cozy kind of introspective it's about the characters and their relationships as opposed to any kind of grand plot this also has like a very isolated setting because it is exclusively in the tea room like Wallace can't leave otherwise bad things will happen to him as like a ghost so it's a little bit smaller in scope than the house in the cerulean sea and it is only very slightly as well because the house in the cerulean sea does pretty much predominantly take place on the island that the house is on with a small cast of characters once again but I feel like the overarching plot like the end goal of the book is just a little bit grander than this one and I do like a little bit of plot in my books. That being said I went into this knowing fully that it would be vibes more than anything else and that's why I wanted to read it at Christmas and it's definitely providing that for me so the question we have now is how I'm going to manage reading three books at once because y'all know I'm not very good at that like I unless I have a reason to be reading different books in different situations like I used to have a book like an ebook I read at work and and a physical book I read at home and then well that was pretty much it. Now I can have an audio that I listen to when I'm busy and a physical that I listen to like when I'm reading with my eyes. But I don't really know how to manage two physical books and an audio book. I think should I alternate like read 50 pages of each kind of like I was doing yesterday. I need a system like I can't just do things at whim. I'm gonna figure that out. I have read a little bit of this today though I've read about 50 pages. I'm almost at the page 300 mark and I don't know as of yet what our plans for tonight are but I'm enjoying everything I'm reading this one's my favorite of these two but I'm also having a really really good time still with House of Earth and Blood. That Tangled puzzle though I was right like it is very very dark so I'm I'm it's going but it's not going as smooth as I necessarily would like. Got a big puddle. Love the floods. I just took Bray out for a walk and went to collect a parcel that was out for delivery yesterday while we were out so we missed it and I'm very excited about this because it is a Christmas present from Book of the Month for like working with them throughout the year. I think it's a sweatshirt. I'm really excited because like I always love a sweatshirt. I will never not love a sweatshirt and seeing as I'm still waiting for my Taylor Swift hoodie which I was hoping would arrive before Christmas for the coziness of it. This one will do in the meantime. I'm actually about to go work out. I'm gonna do 20 minutes of spin, 20 minutes of Pilates and 20 minutes of yoga and then I'm I'm gonna clean the bathroom cabinets, get a shower and play board games all day. So this has arrived at the, oh, it's a hat as well. Oh my God. This has arrived at the perfect time because I'm about to get cozy for the afternoon. So it came with a card that said, thank you for a year of amazing collaboration, wishing you the warmest holiday season imaginable. We have a hat, which I gotta say, my hair's in a bun, so it's not gonna work, but I have been looking for a hat just for the ease of like when I'm on holiday keeping the sun off my head and a sweatshirt which is oh okay it says book of the month down the side I got it I forgot that it's US sizing as well so I got an XL which is going to be massive because US sizing is a little bit bigger than UK sizing it's white I was expecting it to be blue <laughs> I am scared of white because as you know I'm always surrounded by pets and the grubby little thingies but yeah I'm gonna get on with the things that I need to do so that I can get cozy in my new sweatshirt. Thank you very much, Book of the Month. You're probably not watching this, but thank you. Give me the box back. Oh, she's such a demon. I thought I would take this moment to introduce you guys to the game that we're playing today. It is a new one. We don't know what we're doing. It looks like it has a lot of setup. It has a lot of things to punch out. And it is Quacks of Quedlinburg, which was sent to us by Leanne, who said it's one of her and Harry's favorite games. So we'll see how it goes. It looks fun and it has expansions and I do love a game with expansions. Yeah, I'm excited. The flame, which is this? Goes up there. On the one space of the turn indicator. Four seal tiles go on the four seal spaces, which are here. Oh, 
Oh, is the one on every one of these? That says 50. Oh, yeah. Also, it's really What a mess I've made. What a mess I've made there. <laughs> but here. Would recommend, would recommend. Mm. Did you have I to don't think it's what it says it is though. Why? Because you're not curing anyone's ailments, but you're not, are you? Because you're a quack. Yeah. I'm confused though, because I know one of the expansions does add ailments. So how do we cure them? If you like things like Everdell and Dragon, no, Flamecraft. If you like chance based combos. It's kind of like a deck building game, mm. but you build Bag building game. Your bag of ingredients instead. It's cool for like people who like fantasy as well because you're just like making potions. But yeah, I would definitely recommend Good Times or Hard and there's plenty of like variation in the gameplay for like replayability. realized i think it was potentially last night i realized that this vlog has been going for nearly two weeks now and i've only finished one book which is wild but because i've been reading kind of like three at the same time it's i mean it's been taking me a while but i did finish deadlands last night by stacy marie brown so we do have another book down for this vlog this one i didn't love i didn't hate like like i said earlier there are bits that i really like about this and bits that kind of give me the ick i do feel like stacy marie brown is kind of drawing out some elements of the plot to kind of keep you hooked but i feel like it didn't have the same draw as the first two had for me. The slow part in this was the middle and a little bit of the end. Whereas in the earlier books, they kind of start off slow and then the more you go, the more kind of like into it you get. This one very much had the opposite effect on me. We have finally had though some like important reveals, but there are also some conveniences in here which kind of diminishes that a little bit for me so like we'll have creatures popping up that have never been mentioned before like previously there were fae humans demons and druids in this world and we've since had witches and also necromancers mentioned within like the end of this book that i'm pretty sure we've never had like brought up before so it's stuff like that where it's like oh it's convenient how these things kind of exist now for there to be more questions within the plot there are still a lot of questions even with the reveals that have popped up in this one as well like i want to know the specifics of some of the stuff went on but with actually like with the plot thicken at the, at the end with like these new kind of creatures being introduced also delving into the history of the world a little bit i am excited to potentially explore that more in the further books but i feel like conceptually this book is a lot better than it is necessarily in execution like i feel like the way all of the elements are woven together could be done a little bit better and some of the characters and like the dialogue and interactions do great on me a little bit that being said there are some things about this series that i do still really enjoy and it's it's not even like I can articulate why I enjoy this book so much because on the surface like a whole ton of things in this series aren't the best. The writing isn't the best. The plot isn't or the structure of the plot isn't the best but I still enjoy my time reading these books for the most part so I did give this one a three but it is a very very low three star very nearly a two and I am hoping that I kind of like my interest is renewed a little bit going into books four five and six in this series. I am glad that I finished this one though and that I'm actually managing to stay on track with my book club books even if I have been falling behind in some other things in the last like few months so today i spent all of my day sprinting with my patrons and also editing so i got that tbr edited and i've also pretty much edited this vlog up to date i've just wrapped up sprints it's almost 4 p.m i think i'm gonna work out i could sit and read for a bit but for dinner today i'm making like a like a loaded potatoes but like a festive loaded potato so i'm gonna use the last of the leftover turkey and kind of put it over roast potatoes with like gravy brie and stuffing on top so like do you see what the concept kind of is that i'm going with i don't really know what i would call it but it is like i guess like loaded wedges or loaded potatoes but it's almost a christmas dinner <laughs> 
top. And conceptually, like, it's there. Execution, we'll see. Kind of like Deadlands, if I'm being honest. But after that, I don't know. I'm gonna check in with Curtis, see if we can play some more Baldur's Gate today, because, like, I really feel like I haven't dedicated time to Baldur's Gate. Like, I really want to, like, big chunks of time, because I feel like we're always playing on an evening where it's only, like, one or two hours before we're going to bed. So before we have to go back to reality next week, I want to get, like, a good Baldur's Gate session in. But I do also kind of want to finish a book every day from yesterday to like the end of the year and I still have 200 pages of Under the Whispering Door left and I'm also behind on like my one hour a day of House of Earth and Blood so we'll see how the evening plays out anyway I'll keep you guys posted but I'm gonna go get changed and do Cody Rigsby's 30 minute Kelly Clarkson ride because it does have a couple of Christmas songs in so I want to do that like while we're still almost in the season and then I think I have a 20 minute Broadway ride with Hannah Corbin to follow that up but yeah I want to kind of just go get changed and get on with that before I have too much time to think about it and change my mind. <laughs> Sunday and it is going to be an I love Sunday kind of Sunday. I do have a couple more days off tomorrow and Tuesday but I am gonna start like painting the bedroom doing all of like the priming and stuff. So today is my last day of relaxation for the year and obviously like for the season as well which is real sad so i'm doing pretty much nothing but i am also working down to the wire on these books because i still have not finished either of them so i've got up early it is just past 8 a.m now i've been up for about half an hour and i am going to do my best to get these two books read i don't have too much left of this i have less than 100 pages now i'm on page 280 i am enjoying it but still not quite as much as the house in the cerulean sea and then house of earth and blood i think is going to be the real problem because i have three hours and like 50 minutes left of that that jigsaw is really hard as well the dark pieces are a problem and i was getting really frustrated with it last night but i have plenty of jigsaw to get me through those four hours the only thing that i have on today aside from reading and doing whatever I want outside of that which may not be a lot considering how much I have left to read today because I'm not carrying any of these books over till tomorrow like it's the end of the year they have to be done but I do have a FaceTime for a couple of hours this afternoon with Leanne and Beth were just doing like a crafty like hangout a check-in after the Christmas period which will be really cute as well so all good things and I'm gonna have coffee in about 45 minutes and then probably get myself dressed in something cozy. Hey baby! And then just continue reading. So the first book that I should finish and I should finish it before my little FaceTime that I'm having with Leanne and Beth is Under the Whispering Door. So I'll see you hopefully in a couple of hours. <laughs> So I finished Under the Whispering Door. <laughs> Why am I like <laughs> Am I laughing or am I crying? Like I don't even know at this point. <sighs> So I think I've managed to recover enough while I was filling in my spreadsheet to tell you my thoughts on Under the Whispering Door. I don't know if I mentioned that this was one of my Patreon picks. This was the one for November and it was Lauren's pick. So thank you very much to Lauren for finally making me get around to this book. Ever since I read The House in the Cerulean Sea in January last year, I have been meaning to continue on with TJ Clune and it's just because it's a standalone. As you all know, I'm always prior or trying to prioritize like sequels and things like that. And 
And so standalones a lot of the time really do slip by the wayside because I'm like, oh, I can read them whenever, but then actually like I don't, which is something I definitely want to be better about going into next year. But this one was obviously an emotional one. I knew it was going to be going straight into this, like House of the Cerulean Sea was emotional. And this one deals with grief in particular. And I think that the thing that I was least interested in or least invested in throughout my time reading this was the main character of Wallace and his like personal journey as he accepts his death and then like becomes a better person in this journey of moving on to a better place or an afterlife or whatever it is that potentially awaits us after death. I did really like the side characters in here. I think May was my favourite and especially the way that her instinct was always to grab for a knife, which I mean, if you've read this, you'll understand. I loved the ghost dog Apollo as well and I loved Hugo's grandfather. So I think that we had a really strong supporting cast of side characters in here that really made the book for me. I was disappointed with the end of this a little bit and not like the very, very end, but the way the over overarching kind of thing that we're following in here wraps up. I think that it could have been more impactful if it had gone the way that I kind of wanted it to and I hate saying that. I hate saying like this book would have been better if it had done what I wanted because I obviously I'm not an author like and it's probably for a reason but I just sometimes I want books to do the hard thing and that's why I respect authors that take the hard route and I don't feel like TJ Klune took the hard route in this book although it did deliver like a big emotional like punch at the end. I felt like it wouldn't have been bad if this book had have taken the hard path because it would have really reinforced some of the core meanings in this book and like the core meanings that Hugo and May are trying to impart as they do their job as like the ferryman and the reaper. So I feel like the way that the, the main plot line kind of went was not the, the most impactful route. And I feel like if it had gone that way, I would have given this book five stars. As it stands, I gave it four. It obviously impacted me emotionally and that's always what I'm looking for in a book. I always rate the books that make me feel things the highest. Like if I'm feeling a range of human emotions, then it's usually a five star. This one was a four just because I did feel a little bit of detachment from the main character and the main storyline. And while I was really invested in the beginning of this, kind of like the more I went on my interest or my, my draw to this book or the piece in like weaned a little bit as somebody who has, I say has experienced grief. The one thing that I've learned about grief in the last five years is that it never feels any better. <laughs> literally like it's been five nearly six years and it does not feel any better it's just that I it's felt less frequently I want to say so I do really enjoy because I enjoy things that hurt me emotionally so I did really enjoy this exploration of grief I did actually cry at another point in this book that wasn't the very end because of the way that grief is depicted and the amount of like grieving people in this book and kind of just like knowing how it feels and everybody grieves differently that is like one of the biggest things I learned but recognizing recognizing grief in other people and seeing people behave certain ways even if it's different ways so like I behaved or the ways that I felt really like impacted me emotionally as well so I would say if you do have experience with grief just to know that going in but I feel like anybody who reads the synopsis of this book anybody who's familiar with TJ Klune knows to tread carefully when going into one of his books like if you don't want to if you don't want to feel things then TJ Klune is maybe not the author for you. Content warnings in here obviously for things like death of a loved one and grief but also for things like terminal illness and suicide as well but I definitely really really enjoyed this one. Probably my favourite book of December. I did really like Lords of Chaos though which was a sixth wheel of time book. This is probably my best book. I know that I'm gonna rate House of Earth and Blood when I finish it five stars because I still love it and I'm still feeling sad about how I don't love This <laughs> is Sky and Breath but that one doesn't count. That doesn't come through as like a favourite because it's a reread. I usually don't count rereads towards like favourite books in any way because I knew that they were a favourite before I read them, you know? So it is 11.30ish, I think. I've just thrown my glasses on the floor. Um, it's exactly 11.30. So I don't know what time my little meeting with Leanne and Beth is starting but until then I'm gonna go work on my jigsaw and listen to my audiobook. I'm at the point in House of Earth and Blood where I know things are about to get real bad. 
like I'm at that turning point so it's gonna be very unfun for the rest of my listening experience with that but it does have some like super epic cinematic moments at the end of that book which is one of the reasons why I love it so much like I just feel like it's so immersive and it's so immersive in audio as well I'm actually thinking that when I pick up House of Sky and Breath that I might I've listened to the audio at the same time I'm just really enjoying listening to House of Earth and Blood so I do have to pay attention more to House of Sky and Breath when I read that because I'm making a recap video on it and I need to be like super fresh when I read House of Flame and Shadow so I might read along at the same time as listening to the audio but I've loved the audio so much that I think I'm definitely going to incorporate the audio in some way when I reread that and then probably for House of Flame and Shadow as well. permission for you to be filling up water in the back of this video. Mm -hmm. So it is just past 9 p.m. I was working down to the wire because I have a fortnight date. Fort, fort, fortnight, a fortnight date. <laughs> I have a fortnight date from now until past midnight. That is my New Year's Eve celebration. Like call me sad. I don't care. Cozy is key. And I mean at least I'm hanging out with friends, you know, virtually. But at least I'm hanging out with friends instead of just chilling by myself. So I've been working down to the wire and I am by filming this vlog update. Running over a little bit. But I had my headphones on in the shower to finish this in time. Because I also had my little crafty date with Leanne and Beth earlier. Which was supposed to be one to two hours and ended up being like five. But... <laughs> I finished my book. I loved it. I cried at this as well. I don't know whether it's me. I don't know whether I have things going on emotionally or whether it's just the books. And I mean, the books are sad, but I don't always cry. I'm not the most emotional person in the world. Five stars for this. I'm not even going to tell you that much about it because at this point I've read it like literally three times. So anything I say to you now was something that I have said in the past. But I, this remains to be my favorite book of all time. Like I just feel like it covers every single base. I think it's a masterpiece. I love it. It pulls every single emotion out of me. And I am so, so invested in every single character. I think my favorite Crescent City character is Rune. If I'm being honest, it has, oh my God, it just has everything. It has found family. It has a romance that I really like. It has like cinematic points of like high action. It has like themes of trauma and mental health and recovery and grief and friendship. I just love it so much. So I'm really glad actually, this is a great way to end the year. And it is actually undoubtedly my my best book that I've read this month. <laughs> <laughs> which I mean I knew it was going to be I knew it was going to be obviously it doesn't count because it's a reread but it's just so good so I don't even know what am I ending the year on I have no idea how many books I've read this year it's 90 something but I don't think I've made it to 100 at the end on the 31st of December 2023 I have just completed my 95th book of the year my Goodreads goal was 101 so I haven't hit it but who cares right because I've actually read a lot more pages than I read last year I've read like I think about four including this about 5,000 pages more than I actually read in 2022 so even though the number of books isn't as high the number of pages is so that's the end of 2023 guys this one has been a blast like literally I feel like this has been my best year ever definitely my best year since like pre-2018 for sure and I hope like this year was a lot I had a lot going on I loved it I felt like I was thriving 2023 absolutely my year of slay I'm looking forward to amazing things happening in 2024 am I gonna slow down a little bit who knows I just impulse bought busted tickets because I keep looking at the summer shows and seeing that tickets are still in stock and being like ah well I won't buy them yet and then I re-watched the video that I took when I saw them in September and I watched like five seconds of it and I was like, no, treat yourself. So who knows? 2023 was a lot. My plans for 2024 is to be like still a lot going on, but slightly less than 2023. Who knows what the future holds? So before I wrap up this vlog completely, I want to say thank you guys for your support in 2023. Thank you guys for showing up, for watching my content, for supporting me in any way, whether it's like comments, views, likes, 
Patreon, participating in my readathon. I don't know, just being around, being cool, being supportive. Y'all are the best. And every year, especially this year, every year I'm just so grateful that this is my life. Like I get to do this all the time for you guys. Honestly, I have a blast and I love it. And it's all because of you. So this time of year, I'm always filled with gratitude. I'm not a super emotional person and I'm not very mushy either, but I just wanted you guys to know that I truly do appreciate y'all. So happy new year. I hope you've had a good one. Next week for the very first vlog of 2024, I'm gonna be reading some spicy romance. That is all I can tell you at this point because I don't actually know the specifics of what I'm reading, but I do think that I might go straight into House of Sky and Breath while I'm like riding the high of House of Earth and Blood. But yeah, I, I hope you continue to tune into my content in 2024. Thanks for a great 2023. And I do hope you've enjoyed this vlog if you've made it this far, because I know it's definitely a long one. But if you have, please don't forget to like if you liked it, subscribe if you wanna, and I'll see you guys next year. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go when nobody knows with guns in under our petty coats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.